Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election and a scenario that is not likely to happen but still worth exploring. This video is going to be the worst case scenario for Ron DeSantis in the general election. Obviously I know the worst case scenario for Ron DeSantis in general would be for him to maybe lose in Iowa and then drop out of the primary but um, this is just if he gets the general election what would his worst case scenario look like. So the first thing I'm going to do here is look at some polls. Um, right now, DeSantis has a really, really bad favorable rating, especially because, you know, he hasn't even, we haven't even had a caucus yet. We haven't even had a debate yet. And he's already managed to really just collapse. So um, when he won the governorship in Florida, he nationwide on November 8th, he was negative 2%. After he announced his campaign or after he kind of started to speculate about jumping in the race, he went up. He was actually pretty good. As a politician in America nowadays, it's very hard to be approved of, but um, all the way until the end of March, he was above water. He kind of fell a little bit once he actually announced, and he's been in free fall uh, really since um, the middle of April, and now he's at his worst point ever, it looks like. He is negative 10, net unfavorable. And that's really bad because he actually has a lower favorable rating than Joe Biden does have of approval rating. Biden's at 41% approval um, DeSantis is a 36% favorable, and DeSantis is still a bit more popular than Biden, although that's kind of a mirage because Biden has way less undecideds, and he's actually been scrutinized way more by the media for the past three years because he's been president. Um, and so it'd be pretty fair to say that if DeSantis had the same level of nationwide recognition that Biden has, he'd probably be even worse just based on where he's at right now. So DeSantis is at a really bad position right now, and I think that Obviously, this is not my prediction for if he does get the nomination, but seeing as he's in free fall, I think now would be kind of an interesting time to look at what his worst case scenario would look like in a general election. So we're going to start out with our safe states for Joe Biden. These are the normal safe blue states. Uh, in a best case scenario, he might win a couple more safe, but we're not going to go there uh, just yet. So we'll probably give him like Virginia, maybe just just to be fun. It maybe wouldn't be exactly 15 percent, but it would be pretty close. And he stood out with 211 safe electoral votes. DeSantis would really uh, struggle in a lot of states where Republicans rely on rural turnout. So I think that he we're not going to give him Montana or Nebraska's first, certainly not Kansas. Uh, we won't even give him Missouri uh, to be safe just yet, although we will do Indiana um, because I think that's just such a state that's so far gone for, Repub or for Democrats. Um, and so that's going to be... DeSantis' starting point in his worst case scenario, 92 electoral votes. And we can we can make Mississippi likely, but it's about the same as Virginia. It's not really worth talking about. So we're now just going to get into our likely Biden states. Uh, the first would be Arizona, which I know might come as a surprise because he only won it by 0.3 in 2020. But Democrats won the Senate race by five, and it's a left-running state. So Democrats could realistically see a much better electorate than 2022 win with a Mark Kelly-esque performance win by eight. Obviously, I don't think in a best-case scenario, Biden would win by eight, but I think that if you look at the electorate, it would be, relative to 2022, significantly more Democratic, and you could thus see Biden winning by maybe five or six in a worst-case scenario for DeSantis. Um, Biden would obviously carry Nebraska's second by double digits. He won it by seven in 2020, so or he won this new one by six, but it's left-running, so he could win it by 10. And then he'd win uh, Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania by likely margins, too, I would say. Because DeSantis has a lot of downside in the Rust Belt, say what you want about Trump, but I think he's, in a lot of areas in the Midwest, a better candidate than DeSantis. So I would definitely argue that in a worst case scenario for DeSantis, he'd probably lose Minnesota by like 9 or 10, Michigan by 6, and Pennsylvania by 5. And that might seem a little far-fetched because they were both, all, all two of those states, Michigan and Pennsylvania, were actually very close in 2020 and in 2016. But that was Trump, and DeSantis is not Mitt Romney, but... Romney lost Michigan by 10 in 2012 and Pennsylvania by like six. So it's possible. It's within the realm of possibility, I would say. And DeSantis, maybe he has more upside than Trump in the suburbs. But again, he's very unpopular right now. And, and again, he's he's not a moderate. He's not very well liked in the suburbs in general. So he might be better than Trump. But that's not saying very much. So I could see him realistically get, you know, doing almost as bad as Trump in the suburbs in 2024. And um, doing worse with working class and rural voters. That would be a recipe for disaster in the Midwest. Um, I'd also go to New Hampshire. I'd say that would be Biden's 270 electoral vote mark. He'd win it probably by a pretty good amount, maybe 10. He won it by 7 in 2020, so it's not too far-fetched winning it by 10. But that is our uh, likely 
Joe Biden states. For DeSantis, he has a couple likely states. Uh, first is Montana. We're going to go to Kansas and then Nebraska, uh, District 1. So Montana voted for Trump by 16 in 2020. Maybe DeSantis will win it by 10. Kansas voted for Trump by like 14. Maybe he'd win it by 9 because it is a pretty left-running state. Similar thing with Nebraska 1. Voted for Trump by 12 in 2020. Or actually, the new district voted for Trump by 11. So maybe DeSantis will win it by 6 at uh, worst for him. And then Missouri and Iowa, these are not left running states, but they are um, states that are pretty that are more friendly to Trump than other Republicans. In the midterms in Iowa, Republicans did really well, but in Missouri, they did not. And in 2020 and 2018 and 2016, most down ballot Republicans underperformed in these states compared to Trump. So maybe we see a bit of reversion if DeSantis is just that bad in the rural areas. And we see these two states go back to maybe 10 point margins, maybe eight point margins for Republicans, maybe 12 in Missouri and eight in Iowa. Um, and then the final state on this list is going to be South Carolina, which voted for Trump by like 14 in 2020 and would not swing too much. It's a pretty inelastic state, and I think DeSantis is actually a pretty good fit for southern red states like South Carolina. But at the same time, he'd probably only win it by like 11 in this scenario. Um, so that, as you can see, is nowhere close to winning. He's at 128, and Biden's, I mean, already won. But DeSantis is just in a really bad spot here, and it's going to get worse because we're going to give uh, Joe Biden Nevada. In a lean margin, I would say wins it by four. DeSantis has a lot of upside in the Sun Belt. I think that's kind of a fair thing to say, especially in a state like Nevada, where the suburbs of Las Vegas are not as left trending as they like. The thing with people, uh, this is something I've noticed that a lot of people don't really talk about, but um, in swing states in the South, right? Like you look at, and I know Colorado's no swing state anymore, but let's just talk about states used to be competitive Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, Texas. In Arizona, Colorado, and Texas, the suburbs are like zooming left, right? Like you go to Austin or Dallas and Texas, they're like 13 points shifting left every election. In Denver, it's even blue. Or in Arizona, um, they're trending pretty far to the left as well. In Nevada, they didn't really move that much in 2020. So these suburbs are a bit less left trending than they are in other states. And I think that is a bit of a problem for Democrats and that kind of caps their potential here. But in this scenario, Biden would still win Nevada, especially because he won it last time. And then to kind of to go over to the Midwest, um, I I would say Trump or not Trump Biden would win Wisconsin by just under five percent. Evers won it by three and a half. Biden would maybe win it by a little more than that, just by outperforming him in the Wow counties. And then maybe DeSantis would see a decrease in rural turnout. And again, a lot like this isn't likely to happen, of course. But a lot of these losses for Republicans are coming as a result of rural turnout really just decreasing because of a lack of enthusiasm. So we'd see a similar. Rural turnout problem potentially in Georgia and North Carolina. These are states where Republicans rely on rural areas to be competitive statewide. And obviously, that would not be possible without really good rural turnout, especially in Georgia, where the suburbs are getting bluer every two seconds. And to compete, Republicans have to really max out their rural margins. And so without Donald Trump on the ballot, I think that in rural areas is harder to do. Maybe DeSantis will do a little better in the suburbs of Atlanta, but who knows by how much. And especially because the suburbs of Atlanta are not... Like, there are areas in Atlanta that are very white, but the reason the suburbs are trending left at such a fast pace is because people are moving in, the suburbs are diversifying, counties that used to be majority white even 10 years ago are now majority voters of color, whether that be Asian voters, black voters, or Hispanic voters. And in North Carolina, it's a bit less diverse than Georgia in, in the suburbs, but it's still a pretty big problem for Republicans because they are moving left. So that gets Biden to 319. And then for DeSantis, I, I will give him Alaska, and I will give him... Uh, the rest of these states, except for Texas, which we'll talk about in detail here. Um, but I'd say he wins Alaska probably by like, I don't know, 4%. Because the thing is, a lot of people forget how close Alaska was in 2020. Trump only won it by 10, and he won it by 15 in 2016. So even just the same swing would result in it being Trump plus 5 or DeSantis plus 5. And in the best case scenario, of course, it would be a little close than that. So maybe DeSantis wins Alaska by 3 or 4 Florida, it's his home state. It's kind of a tough call whether it's lean or likely, but in an absolute worst case scenario, maybe Biden, because of that incumbency boost, improves with Hispanics, maybe because of the lack of support for DeSantis in rural areas like the Panhandle or in these rural kind of counties in the middle of nowhere in the central part of the state, maybe he only wins by three, um, though he will obviously carry the state. Ohio, this is kind of a coattails thing. Sherrod Brown will energize Democrats. DeSantis will potentially not energize Republicans, and it narrows up a little bit, but it's still not going to vote for Joe Biden. And then in Maine's 2nd District, it's a really swingy seat. Democrats did really well there last year, and they've historically done well down ballot. It's just ever since Trump's been on the scene, it, Republicans have won it federally. So I don't think it would flip to Joe Biden no matter what, 
But DeSantis has a lot of downside in these areas because we've never seen a non-Trump Republican in recent memory win Maine's second district. So I'm going to say that DeSantis wins it by three. It's certainly a weird one. He could easily win it by a lot more, but just to be cautious in a worst case scenario, I think it would be pretty close. So that leaves our final state, which is Texas. And I'm going to give it to Joe Biden. Um, I was originally not going to because I just think DeSantis is just enough upside in the suburbs to hold on to it narrowly, even in a worst case scenario for him. But nevertheless, I thought more about it. And I'm like, well, hold on. If I'm going to have in a best case scenario, obviously Ted Cruz would lose in a best case scenario for Democrats. And DeSantis said his worst. Maybe we see turn up from the panhandle, which is uh, right up here. Maybe we see turn up from these areas that are super red, that net Republicans in the end, hundreds of thousands of votes. Maybe they see decreases in turnout. Maybe the incumbency boost, kind of like what I talked about in Florida, helps Biden with Hispanics, which has historically been a pretty accurate trend. And then maybe Biden just in the suburbs, DeSantis isn't as popular as we think. Again, he's not popular right now. Maybe he gets worse between now and election day. Maybe he does lose Texas by a point. So that is the absolute best case scenario for uh, Joe Biden against Ron DeSantis. And I, it's pretty interesting. I think DeSantis actually has more downside than Trump in a lot of states, like in Ohio or Iowa and Maine's second district. But he would also, I think, in general, be a slightly better candidate, although at this point with his recent polling, it's not looking good for him. So thank you so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me know what you think. And I'll see you all in the next one.